Hey students, this is Miss Wint, and I want to take you through how to make um, binary ionic compounds. And for distance learning, that's page 13 in your packet. So if I take a look in Schoology at it, there's an info sheet here that goes with it. <clears throat> so simple binary ionic compounds. These are made by the combination of a cation and an anion. So cations are positive. There's that T inside. There's like a plus sign. And they're always metals that have lost electrons. Anions are going to have a negative charge because they gain those electrons. The two ends will help you remember negative. And these are always nonmetals. So ionic compounds are more commonly known as salts. So there's the salt that you put on your french fries. Sometimes we call it table salt. Um, there's lots of different kinds of salt. Um, we use different kinds of salt to melt ice in the wintertime, different kinds of salt in your water softeners in your houses. Okay, so the kind of the French fry salt is just one kind of salt. All right, binary ionic compounds are compounds containing only two elements. So that prefix bi means two, like a bicycle. When writing formulas for ionic compounds, we use subscripts to indicate how many of each atom is contained in the compound. Remember that even though ions have charges, ionic compounds must be neutral. Therefore, the charges on the cation and the anions must cancel each other out. In other words, the net charge of ionic compound equals zero. Okay, so when you add all the positive and negative charges together in your answer, they always have to equal zero. Then you know you have the right answer. Okay, so they have a couple examples here, and I am actually going to do these examples on the worksheet. Okay, um, so your worksheet looks like this. You probably have a paper copy of this. If you'd rather do it in notability, that's fine. And I'm going to flip over to here. Um, so there's our worksheet, but you always want your periodic table right next to you. Okay, so make sure your periodic table is out as well. So what I need to do for my first compound is says sodium bromide. I need to find those two pieces on the periodic table. Okay, um, here's sodium right here. And the symbol is Na, and it has one extra electron to get rid of, so it's going to make a plus one charge. And we always pair up a metal and a non-metal. So this is my metal on the left side. So the other one, bromide, must be on the right side. And here it is right here. Now the ending is a little different. Okay? When we put these guys together, we change the ending on this guy. You did that on the last worksheet you did. So instead of bromide, the atom by itself is called bromide. Okay, and this has a negative one charge. So I'm going to write down those symbols and those charges on my worksheet. That's where I always start. Okay, so sodium was Na, and it had a positive charge. Bromine was Br, and it makes a negative charge. Now in this case, this positive and this negative are going to cancel. They perfectly cancel just the way they are. So I don't need any subscripts because plus one, minus one cancel. So to write the formula, all I need to do is write the metal ion first and then the nonmetal second. Okay. I do not need any subscript numbers because they canceled. And I do not put positives or negatives in my formula because they canceled. Okay, so it's just the symbols. And we always put the positive one first. All right, let's look at the next one here. Calcium chloride. Got to go find the symbols and the charges. So head up to the chart here. Here's calcium. It's got a positive two charge, so it has two electrons to get rid of. And then here's chlorine right here. And that needs just one electron. Okay, so I'm going to write those charges down here. Calcium with Ca, and it has two electrons it wants to get rid of, so two plus. And then my chloride, chlorine, was a one. And you can write the one if you want to, um, but just the negative is fine. Now in this case, these guys don't cancel. 
the numbers are different. So let me go down, scroll down a little bit and kind of show you. Um, actually, I'll go to another page here, what this is, okay? So the calcium atom, Ca, has two extra electrons. We wanna get rid of those guys. The chlorine has seven. It's missing one, okay? So we're gonna steal this one right here and bring it out over there. And now this chlorine has eight electrons and everything's perfectly happy. However, this calcium still has one left. We gotta get rid of that. So when you did the online activity, you had to add another atom to take that electron away. And that's exactly what we're gonna do, okay? We are going to take that guy and bring it over to the calcium, okay? And that'll get rid of that too. So now our calcium has zero valence electrons. He's happy and stable. And we have two calcium atoms that have eight valence electrons, so they're happy and stable as well. So to make everybody happy, it took one calcium atom and it took two chlorine atoms. So I would put a two as a subscript there. And this would be my formula. Now there's, there's an easier way to do this. I am pretty lazy and I do not want to write all these dot pictures all the time. I totally can anytime I need to visualize this, but there's kind of a cheat method, okay? Remember when I wrote the symbols with the charges? So calcium was a positive two, and then the chlorine was a negative one. There's something called the crisscross method. And I can take this two, positive two charge on the calcium, and I'm gonna bring it down here and write it below the chlorine. So I'm gonna switch it and bring it down. This negative one is gonna come down here. Now, of course, I don't need to write the one, but if you look, I ended up with the exact same answer. One calcium, two chlorines. So this crisscross will always give you the right answer if the charges don't match, okay? So, up here on my worksheet, two goes over there, one goes over there, and my answer, CaCl2. Okay, so that's where those subscripts come from. When we don't have charges that match, sometimes we need more of one kind of atom to balance out. Okay, let's do another one here. Magnesium sulfide. Okay, so step one, go to the periodic table, find those atoms. Um, so here's magnesium, it's a positive two. Uh, sulfide will be sulfur, and it has, my periodic table has a bunch of options here. Always just use the top number, unless it says something else, use the top number. Um, so this has a negative two. So I have magnesium's a positive two, sulfur's a negative two. I'm gonna write down those symbols and charges over here. Magnesium, a positive two. Sulfide with a negative two. Okay. Now, if I crisscross these, I would end up with two each, but that's actually not correct. Just with by themselves, they balance out. A positive two and a negative two will cancel. So I don't need any subscripts for this guy. I just need one magnesium and one sulfur. Magnesium has two extra electrons. Sulfur needs two. They match up perfectly. Now, if you put the subscripts here, technically it's not correct. And your future chemistry teacher might make it wrong. Okay, it'd be kind of like a math class when you have a fraction of two fourths. Your math teacher is going to tell you, hey, you need to reduce that down to one half. Okay, that's kind of like what this is. If I had a two for both of these, it's not reduced. You could um, reduce it down and make it more even. Okay, we're not going to be that picky, um, but just be aware of, you might see that in the future. Okay. Um, next one here, aluminum oxide. 
Um, I can tell you, just because I do this a lot, um, that aluminum on the periodic table is going to be a plus 3. Al plus 3. Oxide is oxygen, and oxygen is a negative 2. Okay, now these numbers do not match, so I am going to crisscross them. I'm going to take the 2 on the oxygen and put it down at the bottom of the aluminum. I'm going to put the 3 on the aluminum down at the bottom of the oxygen. And my answer would be Al2O3. Okay, so for all of these problems here, 1 through 10, you want to start by looking up the symbol and the charge on the periodic table. If they cancel out, just write the symbols down next to each other and make sure the metal always goes first. If they don't cancel out, then do the crisscross method and write your formula with the subscripts. Okay. Now, the bottom part of the page here, you're doing the opposite. It's giving you the formula, and you have to say, how would you say that? Okay. Um, and you have lots of examples above <laughs> as well. Um, but to write the formulas, you always just write the name of the metal, just like it says on the periodic table. You don't have to change it. And then the non-metal, we're going to put that IDE ending that you practiced on the previous worksheet. Um, so number 11 is potassium oxide. K is potassium. O is oxygen. Write the metal as normal. And then instead of oxygen, I change it to oxide. Okay. Um, number 12, Mg, if I look that up here, that's magnesium. So I would write magnesium. And I'm going to type it instead of write it here. Magnesium. And then I is iodine. So IO. And if you end up spelling the second word wrong, it's okay. Um, if you're kind of close, that's going to be good enough. Okay, so I would like you guys to try this worksheet. Now on Schoology, if you're thinking, oh, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here, um, I did put another video right above this assignment. Okay, um, so there's a video here from YouTube called Writing Ionic Formulas Introduction. And it's a great video. Um, so if you're feeling at all uncomfortable about doing this, watch this video first before you move on with your worksheet. Okay. Now your next assignment is the same idea. It's just the paper looks a, diff a little different. Um, so if you can do page 13, I know you can do page 14 as well. And I'll make a short video to help you with that. Okay. So go ahead and get to work, guys. Have a great day.